All right, guys, let's get the prep spotlight going. As always, the prep spotlight is brought to you by the great people at Jacobs Insurance. Head over there if you have any insurance needs and want to talk to those fine folks over there. We love the people at Jacobs Insurance. And today we're recording on Sunday, Selection Sunday for high school football playoffs in Michigan. It's always an exciting time. And especially for a story like the Perry Ramblers, making the playoffs for the first time everyone made it the COVID year 2020, but officially the first time in program history, super cool story. Uh, head coach Jeff Bott is joining us here. Appreciate you taking some time out on selection Sunday. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. So we're, uh, you know, we Corona guys and we we've interviewed a bunch of other coaches from the area and we follow high school football over the state, but we, Maybe our bread and butter is a little more in mid Michigan. So when sure. we come across stories like this, Duran last year was a cool story. Um, you know, Chesanine this year, we talked That's to their true. head coach and, you know, among others, um, we, we love to just get some background and talk to you guys. So uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording. You guys had a watch party um, to see who you guys ended up with. You ended up matched up with Puama Westphalia. Uh, What's the vibe right now, you know, around town with your team at school, you know, just everything with the guys. It's got to be super exciting, right? It, it is. Everyone's excited. I mean, this has been something this town has been wanting forever. Um, it's, you know, we, we've fallen short in my tenure. And I mean, there's been a lot of great teams that came through Perry that with the old system, they didn't qualify and they were darn good football teams. Um, right now, and I'd say everyone's on cloud nine. I mean, we're, yeah. we're you know, very happy. What um what is it like when you do finally kind of break through? Was that kind of your guys' goal this uh, entire year heading into fall camp? Was hey, let's be the team that you know makes history here at Perry. Let's let's make the playoffs. And how did it feel once you kind of finally got the word today? All right, we're officially in. What was that initial moment like when you officially got confirmation? Well, it, it did. You're right. It did start back in the summer, and we've kind of had a don't talk about it mentality because things have not always gone our way and we've come up short, um, had several opportunities and just, it didn't work out for us. Um, and these seniors this year, they didn't want to hide from anything. Um, and, and that group of leadership we have, and, you know, until you see and hear our name up there on the screen, you know, you do you know, you know, something not going to go right to something, you know, something we're going to happen point wise when I wake up this morning. Um, but it was, it was, you know, great seeing that up there. And, you know, it feels like about 10 million pounds is lifted off my shoulders <laughs> and whatnot. And the kids, I mean, they're on cloud nine right now. Yeah, Coach, coach, it's just an awesome achievement to get to the playoffs. Um, give us a little bit about your background, your journey to Perry. I know you've been there now as head coach, what, nine years. But yeah. what about before that? So I'm a graduate of Hazlitt High School, played at Hazlitt. Um, and as, as soon as I got done with school in 95, I started coaching for Charlie Adluski. Um, he was my coach my senior year. He came down, and um, I probably should have been brain surgeon as long as I was in college because I kept messing around <laughs> with coaching. Um, but I, you know, started coaching at 19, um, 47 mm. now. Uh, feels like I've been doing it forever. And I was 17 years there on staff for football and basketball. And um, Rob Porter, a good friend of mine, came over and took the Perry job. And um, he said, hey, you interested? My family's from Perry. I'm, I'm one of the few bots not to graduate from Perry. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I took a leap, came over there and came over here. And here we sit now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's cool. It, it's always fun to hear the the journey stories of coaches. Again, I, I brought up uh, Matt Walter, who's coaching at Chesanine. Yeah. He told he was way up in the UP for a while right. and then he's bounced around. So, you know, it's always cool to hear that. Um, and speaking of Perry and the journey and everything like that, uh, you kind of brought it up being on cloud nine and, you know, the community and all the support at your selection party uh, tonight. What's it like around, you know, seeing, looking up in the stands and seeing the support from the community and how big is that for the kids? You know, I've, I have a couple of nephews who are on the team right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely keeping tabs on what you guys are doing. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the community, how excited they are. They've been waiting for this, but how, how big and how special do you think it is for them to be able to go up to a school like Pawama Westphalia and watch a playoff football game for Perry? You, you know, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because I thought it was crazy when I was still coaching a Hazlitt, we came over and played Perry. We were in the districts together with basketball 
and we walked in. It was a district semi game, and, and I was like, "Good lord, half the town's here," <laughs> you know. And we kind of chuckled at it. This town follow. It doesn't matter what the sport is. Yeah. We'll go to summer league for basketball. We'll go to seven on sevens, and you look at the sideline. There's 35, 40 people sitting in chairs. I mean, they love their sports, and and I would I would venture a guess that the visiting stands are going to be full over in PW on Friday night. Um, I, I know, like, you know, like I said, the temperature in town is everyone's wanted us for so long and it's, you know, here we are. And I'm going to guess, uh, there, there won't be a bunch of people left in town when the game goes off Friday night. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we get into maybe previewing, uh, your upcoming matchup on Friday, who, who are some of the key, uh, contributors you guys have had this season, uh, for a lot of our listeners, who maybe don't follow Perry football. Who are some of those key guys you want to kind of give some shine to? Sure. We, um, our, on offense, our quarterback leads us Austin Poyer. Um, he's had a real good season for us so far. He, he's, he's amassed 26 touchdowns total on offense through the ground and through the air. Um, he's got a, a little over 1,600 total yards. Um, he's wow. matured so much as a quarterback for us. He used to be a you know one-dimensional, I just can run it, run it, run it. And um, he's put some good touch on the football this year. Our offensive line, I mean, they're kind of unsung heroes. I mean, their name never gets read. It never gets said. Anything in between, they know when they give up a sack. That's about the only time people think yeah. about the offensive line. Um, but that group up there, Tanner Selvig and Cameron Duty, um, whatnot, and Gabe Reeder, our seniors, are kind of leading the way there. Uh, defensively, um, again, another name. We only have 15 kids on the team, so wow. we kind of uh, – you get a lot of names twice. But Cameron Duty has <laughs> been our, our middle linebacker since he was a freshman. Yeah. Um, and he's now a senior and he's over a hundred tackles and another senior wow. force is Tim Hall at safety. And he's, he's right up there as well. You know, it's been kind of an interesting journey as, as Matt liked, like to say there, I mean, you, you got 15 guys on the team. So you're low on numbers on the varsity, uh, your football stadium is going under construction. So you play your first two home games at Nick and East stadium in Corona. You uh, put together a schedule that was an independent schedule, which obviously worked out to your advantage to yeah. get you enough points to get to the playoffs. And then looking at the future, you're joining a very, very tough conference in the central Michigan athletic conference. Just some thoughts on all that. You know, it's it, one thing I've hung my hat on is we've always had varsity JV football in my nine years. I mean, when I took this job, we were 550 kids. Well, we're 290 now. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, our numbers are low. Um, and, you know, the league is a good fit for us size-wise. Obviously, we are walking into a hornet's nest as far as football programs-wise. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's such story traditions there. Um, you know, there won't be a Friday night off. I mean, we left a league that had Olivet Lakewood. So, I mean, you know, but there were other teams, you know, we knew we'd be in the football game, you know, if we played. Um, but, you know, the CMAC is a very, very proud league and, and they're a very talented small town sports league. And um, it was unfortunate we couldn't get in. But like you said, it, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I was able to work with the schedule a little bit to get us some points um, that would have got us there. But it's... Um, it's it's good looking football. I mean, it's our district is the CMAC, yeah, uh, with Langsburg and Bath, PW and Perry, and it's um, and I'm sure that's that happens other other um, other regions and whatnot. But it, it kind of struck me as funny as I was driving in here. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely exciting. And speaking of exciting, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but getting to head up to a school like PW and play a playoff game, I mean. Any anyone who doesn't know that that's one of the more storied programs really in mid Michigan, maybe in the whole state, you and know, the state. With, with their whole their recent success, what four times they've won the state title. Um, they've just had a ton of success up there. So it's almost like, you know, Clash of the Titans, you know, you got PW and then first time playoff team in Perry. What's gonna kind of be? I mean, you know, it's all new. You know, you you just saw your matchup and everything. You're just about to go watch film after you get out of here uh, with us. What's going to be the message you send you you tell your kids like, hey man, just soak this up. You know we're going up there to play one of the best teams in the state. Take advantage of the opportunity. Or what do you think is going to be the message that you send to your players? You know, we, we with our goals with making the playoffs, we've checked one box off. Um, yeah. Another box for us would be winning six games for the first time in 30 years in program history. And obviously checking the box off of having a chance to compete with PW. I mean, this is our first time playing in quite a few years. Um, we know what we're in for, um, you know, I joked with the kids, Hey, if we're going to do this, we might as well do it right. 
Yep. So we get to we get to head up there, and I mean, it's I've always admired that program from afar. Even when I was at Hazlitt, um, sure. and they just do it the right way. They're tough kids. They play football and they get after it. Yeah. And you know, I I may not have a bunch of kids, but I know Friday night when they strap it on, they're gonna they're not gonna back down from anyone. So I mean, wherever it ends up, we'll be on that field and we're gonna get after it. Awesome. Well, Coach, we're uh, as you can tell, we're huge high school supporters, especially in this area, and. We wish you nothing but the best in the playoffs against PW and down the road in the future. Uh, it's been a, a lot of fun catching up with you, hearing a little bit about Perry Rambler football. And again, thanks for the time. Get to the film and uh, good luck to you on Friday night. Thank you, guys. Again, I can't thank you enough for taking the time with me. All righty. All right, thanks, Coach. Jacobs Insurance Agency has served Shiawassee County and the surrounding areas since 1977. Just like Three Point Podcasts, we've had three generations, Gary Jacobs Sr., Gary Jacobs II, Brian Jacobs, and myself, Noah Jacobs, serving our community with offices in Waterford and Owasso on M21, just west of Home Depot. Stop in or go online to jacobsinsurance.com to get a quote or get your questions answered by our team. Jacobs Insurance is a proud supporter of our local schools and the proud sponsor of the Prep Spotlight. Insure everything, local, independent, and trusted. It's our family working together to protect yours. That's the Jacobs way. All right, guys, that was uh, good stuff there with Perry head coach Jeff Bott. But uh, as we always like to do, we like to bring you up to speed on what happened and what's going forward. And last week, Corona finished off a perfect 9-0 regular season, 31-7 to over Armada. I love the Argus Press headline, by the way. Corona sinks Armada, you know, kind of a take on Armada. <laughs> Wyatt Bauer, though, man, just we talk about him all the time. 18 of 26, 204 yards, three touchdowns, all three to his his twin brother, Tarek. Tarek had eight catches for that total. Uh, Wyatt's would have been uh, higher. Actually, he actually did have over 300 yards passing in the game. And, and oh. Tarek had 204 himself. Uh, Jaden Eddington, 10 tackles, four TFLs. I mean, they wrapped up the season, and now they get ready for a real tough district, even though they're hosting it. Yeah, from the sounds of it, before we talk a little bit about those that, that district and some of the, the other playoff matchups, uh, from the sounds of it, listening into you, Casey, and Bart, it was a bit of a battle versus yeah. Armada. Um, you know, maybe like you guys said in the broadcast and – maybe has been said elsewhere, maybe the type of game that Corona needed heading into the playoffs, you know, mm -hmm. the running clock, every game was becoming, becoming a story starters, never playing in the fourth quarter. So maybe, maybe it's a, not necessarily like an eye opener, but like a, the, the type of game Corona needed heading into the playoffs. Cause that, that's the kind of games they're going to be seeing if they want to go farther in the playoffs. So, still so really cool for them to wrap up a nine and no season for yeah. sure. Well, I think Coach Herrick has a few things to work on, too. I mean, yeah, it, it was it was a sloppy game. I'm just going to tell you right now. Sloppy, a lot of questionable calls, you know. There was a lot oh, of feistiness. Wow. So, I mean, it yeah, was one, just one of those one, nights. One of my buddies who was at the game, um, you know, tech, texting upstate, updates and stuff, he said, yeah, it was nice of Armada to bring their own referees, too. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to high school football. That's yeah. It's you're, it's shaky at best. You're right. right. Pretty much anytime, anytime you run the refs out. So yeah. yeah, I like I said in the broadcast though. I would like to see. And again, I don't want to be critical. That they're having a heck of a time even getting referees. But you know, call the obvious stuff. But anything that's somewhat borderline, let them play it out. That's my my viewpoint. Uh, yeah. Some of the other key games: Chesanine over Carrollton, 44-6. Uh, Indians, their eighth straight win after losing that home opener against Bath. New Lothrop, again, they've been flying under the radar this year. Maybe not anymore now that we're going to start the playoffs. 8-1 and one on the season. They uh, pounded Division Four Lake Fenton, who's also in the playoffs. 38 to nothing. Jack Kohanic, the quarterback, wow. had five of the six Hornet TDs in that one. Uh, Ovid Elsie over Standish Sterling, 28 to 27. The Marauders have made it. And who should I talk about in that game, Jared? <laughs> Trey Stokar, give them to us. 312 yards, all four touchdowns. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Uh, I will say the, the new Lothrop scores, just going back there for a second. I mean, yeah. they are just getting better and better. Tell me if that surprises you with a Clint Galvis led team. Uh, right. Big time. I mean, that's an eye opening score. They beat a D4 playoff opponent. Basically running clocked them. Uh, right. I mean, them and Ithaca it should be a really fun D8 matchup. Ted, who are, who are you going to be following at the We're, station if if New Lothrop makes a run and so does Corona? 
Yeah, well, that's up to station management. I think right now uh, things are looking pretty promising on the Cavalier front. We've had some first-time advertisers, quite a handful, have decided to hop on board. So it'll all be officially announced tomorrow. But, uh, you know, it all depends if teams keep winning, too. We have to reshuffle every week on who's continuing on. Uh, Other games in eight-man football, Byron got their first win over Vestaberg, 36-18, and Morris over Matabella. 46 to 6. The O's playing their best ball here late in the season, heading into the eight man playoffs. And one final question, non football related, in cross country in the Shiawassee County Championship at Corona High School, Owasso came away with two individual champions. On the boys' side, Trojan Simon Erforth took the medalist honors. And on the girls' race, Emma Crandall raced to first place honors. So congratulations to them. But let's slide nice. things back over to football for a moment. And, uh, talk briefly here about uh, the upcoming playoffs. This is Selection Sunday where we're recording. Uh, yep. Got the got the matchups. I think we we just start right in Division 5 with 8-0 Hamity at 9-0 Corona. And then Williamston, you know, middle of, middle of the road season at 6-3, and three, playing on Pontiac Notre Dame Prep, who comes in with uh, some pretty impressive victories. That sets up to be, if all goes according to Hoyle, quite a district championship. I mean, that that was we talked to Jason Hutton about it last week. And I feel like maybe, you know, some of the other guests that we've had on have talked about, obviously, the the two Grand Rapids teams over there, Catholic Central and West Catholic. They're in a region over there. They'll, They'll meet up in a regional championship if it shakes out like that. And then, like Jason Hutton told us last week and we've talked about with with Notre Dame uh, prep. It almost feels like if it shakes out, if Corona is able to get by Hamity, if if uh, Notre Dame Prep's able to get by Williamston, it almost feels like that Corona Notre Dame Prep game is going to be a winner gets to Ford Field. We do you don't want to get ahead of yourselves, but right. that that feels like that way with the seeding. I mean, mm-hmm. um, with the top four teams, those are the top four teams. And Jared, you were looking at Notre Dame Prep. They have some, like you said, Ted. They have some very impressive wins on their schedule. Don't sleep on Hamity though. I mean, I remember right. Sam Ali. And Brandon Green, they were they were talking about Hamity, maybe not the strongest schedule. Probably what their their best win is over Bentley. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe not the biggest noteworthy schedule. That's right. why they're. I mean, I think they were a good twenty points below Corona in the in the whole playoff points thing. So, but they can put up points. They have they have a very big point differential. They've scored like over three hundred points and only given up about forty or fifty or something. So, a very fast Ham- team. Very fast. Hamity's going to give Corona a run for their money, too. It looks like from the the little bit of quick research I did on Notre, on Notre Dame Pontiac Prep, looks like they have quite the stud quarterback. So it'll be a really nice matchup between him and Wyatt Bauer. It looks yeah. like he has more touchdowns than incompletions uh, on the season. And he had <laughs> six total touchdowns against Gladwin, who won Division Five last year. Right. Uh, they beat him by 30. So gonna be it's going to be uh, – you're going to find out what Corona's made of. Uh, in a couple weeks here. And Hamity, you mentioned it. I mean, not exactly the best round one draw you want for what what Corona is basically what, the number two overall seed, and you have to play an unbeaten team. Uh, But it is what it is. I mean, if you have forward field aspirations, you got to beat teams like that. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be a really fun district. Um, District of death, some are calling it. So yeah. Also, yeah, like they, I said, at the the West Catholic that, that was going to be one of the big ones is West Catholic Catholic Central building over there, but they're not in the same district; they're in the same region. So you know they they both should be able to get out of their district. But and if they, if it plays out that it's Notre Dame Prep and Corona in two weeks, basically at the Nick, man, that, that there's going to be a lot of electricity at that game. Yeah, Corona got the they definitely got the draw because they'll have three home games. Yeah, you know if they can continue on and win. Yeah. You know, in some other key division matchups, Division 6, Central Montcalm at Chesanine, the Chesanine Indian story. I mean, we've been on it. We had their head coach on, Matt Walter, on the podcast. Eight and one. You know, they slipped up in week one, probably didn't know what they had. The game got away from them just a little bit to Bath. Could have been a 9-0 and season for Chesanine. And, I mean, they got a, a stud running back and obviously good coaching and could set up to be a Mid-Michigan Athletic Conference district championship as Ida at Ovid Elsie's on the other side of the bracket. Yeah, that, that's always exciting when you see things kind of shake out like that. And, of course, we talked a little bit about Division 8 uh, off-air, but uh, Michigan Lutheran Seminary at New Lothrop, Clint Galvis has his team all of a sudden just crank it into gear. They also 
could have had a nine and zero season. They yeah. they gave up a, an interception right at the end of that Chesanine game, or they could have maybe pulled that one out. But what a what a district! Fowler and Ithaca is on the other side of the bracket for Division Eight. Man, that's about as tough a district as you can have. And yeah. what I, I think I saw too, Ubley is in that that region mm-hmm. also, or, or yeah, in the district, and and they're for real team. They're for real. I know our friends over at Thumb Tailgater Sports over there. Um, <laughs> they they hype up Ubley quite a bit. So oh, yeah. What, and it would be Ithaca, New Lothrop in round two, right? So that would be a, a, a heck yeah. of a matchup. So it is definitely cool seeing seeing some of these shake out. I know Morris is they're they're having to go over to Deckerville. Some of those like lower divisions, you get some really cool like kind of like random uh, matchups sometimes with you know where where they have to travel or whatever. But it's definitely a fun time. Right on. Well, we're looking forward to it, and uh, we'll know by the time this uh, podcast drops where the castle will be for that uh, Friday night opener. I have a hunch, but uh, it'll be officially announced on Monday. So let's move on and talk about uh, other football. Well, there was a little game over in East Lansing that uh, <laughs> I think we might have a few thoughts on that, and then the Detroit Lions at Baltimore. We'll have uh, our commentary on those coming up right after this. <laughs> 